Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today, we are looking at something that, well, it's really grabbed everyone's attention lately. Comet 3i Atlas. Officially, that's 3i 2025A1. Right. Now, you might think, okay, another comet, but uh, this one's different. Oh, very different. It's only the third interstellar object we've ever confirmed visiting our solar system, and it even got bright enough for some people to see without a telescope. Which is pretty amazing. So our mission today, follow this cosmic visitor, we'll unpack the latest observations, dig into the science, and even touch on how people reacted using info right up to September 7th, 2025. So, okay, let's get into it. What's the big deal with this interstellar guest? Well, what makes 3i Atlas so incredibly exciting is the direct glimpse it gives us into um, how other star systems might form planets. A glimpse into other systems? How so? It's not like Umomua, which was, you know, kind of mysterious and inactive, yeah. or even Tuai Borisov, which acted more like a typical comet we know. ATLA is active. It's shedding material as it flies through our system. So it's like getting a pristine sample, almost a sort of cosmic messenger carrying bits of its home system's building blocks. Wow. Delivered right here for us to study. It's like finding, I don't know, a blueprint from another solar system. A message in a bottle from light years away. <laughs> That's incredible. So to understand that journey, where did it start for us? How did we even spot it? Uh, the first detection was back on January 15th, 2025. Okay. It was the ATLAS telescope system in Hawaii that's the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. Right, ATLA. And when they first saw it, honestly, it just looked like a regular comet. A bit fuzzy, you know, that typical appearance. Yeah. We assumed it was one of ours. So it just blended in at first. What was the giveaway then? The moment you went, hang on, this isn't local. Exactly. It came down to two things, really. Spectroscopic analysis, looking at the light signatures, and crucially, its path. Its trajectory. The path. Yeah. Comets from our solar system are bound to the sun. They follow elliptical orbits. They come back eventually. Mm-hmm. But 3i Atlas was on a hyperbolic trajectory. Its eccentricity number was greater than one. Ah, the math gave it away. Totally. That tells us it's moving too fast on a path that's going to take it right out of the sun's influence forever. A one-way ticket. So that confirmed it. Number three, after Umumua and Borisov. Precisely. Umumua being more asteroid-like, Borisov more cometary, and now this one. That really sets the stage. So, okay, interstellar object confirmed. What did we learn about it physically? Right off the bat. Well, the exciting part was how quickly we started getting details. And these early observations showed it was um, dynamic, mm -hmm. active, very different from Umoa. Right, which didn't do much. Exactly. Ground-based telescopes like the VLT in Chile, Gemini North, and Hawaii, they got a size estimate pretty fast, roughly 10 kilometers across. Okay, so decent sized, bigger than Oumuamua. Yeah, significantly larger than Oumuamua, which was maybe under a kilometer. Yeah. But a bit smaller than two Iborosov. Got it. And even early on, it had this bright coma, the fuzzy cloud around the nucleus. Mm -hmm. That was a clear sign it was already outgassing, releasing material as it got warmer. And the first hints about composition suggested water ice, CO2, organic compounds. Yeah. Typical comet stuff. But finding it on an interstellar visitor, that's gold for comparison. So this icy active visitor, definitely not staying. You mentioned its path. Can you trace that journey through our solar system for us? Yeah, it's been quite a ride tracking something moving at, what, about 26 kilometers per second relative to the sun? Wow. It came in from the direction of Ophiuchus, the constellation. Its closest point to the sun, perihelion, is actually still coming up October 30th, 2025. Okay, soon then. Yeah, and it'll be at 1.4 astronomical units AU. So 1 AU is Earth-Sun distance. 1.4 puts it just inside Mars's orbit. And closest to Earth, did we have to worry? No, no, thankfully not. Closest huh. approach to us was September 15th, 2025. It passed us at a safe 1.8 AU. That's uh, about 270 million kilometers. Plenty right. of space. Phew. Okay, good to know. So it passed us safely. You mentioned the orbital parameters earlier, the numbers that confirmed its origin. Can you break those down a bit more? What do they tell us? Right. So this raises the question, what can its path tell us about where it came from? Exactly. The Minor Planet Center crunched the numbers and they really nailed down its interstellar status. Things like its semi-major axis being negative, negative 1200 AU. Mm -hmm. And its aphelion distance is essentially infinite. Negative. Infinite. That sounds... Weird. It does if you're thinking about objects orbiting our sun. For them, those numbers are positive finite. But for ATLAs, these numbers just scream hyperbolic trajectory. It means it's absolutely not bound to our sun. It was heading out from the moment it arrived. A true interstellar traveler. No question. 
and its path gives us a rough direction, pointing back towards a region maybe 20 light years away. But finding the specific star it came from, that's still a mystery. 20 light years. That is just mind boggling. So, with such a rare guest, I bet every telescope possible was pointed at it. What did our big guns like Hubble and JWST manage to see? Oh, absolutely. It was an all hands on deck situation globally. Hubble got some amazing shots back on July 21st, 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Even from like 277 million miles away, it showed this really well defined coma, and the tail was already stretching over 100,000 kilometers. Incredible. And then uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, brought its infrared capabilities to bear. That gave us incredibly detailed spectroscopy. Meaning it could see the specific molecule. Precisely. Signatures of water vapor, carbon monoxide, methane, the actual ingredients. That stuff is absolutely vital for figuring out its composition and the conditions back in its home system. Wow. And meanwhile, big ground telescopes like Keck and Subaru were constantly monitoring its brightness, watching for changes in the coma and tail structure. And it got bright enough for us to see. For a little while, yeah. yeah its brightness peaked in late August 2025. It reached about magnitude 4.5. Which means? Which means, under really dark skies, away from city lights, you could actually spot it with the naked eye. A faint fuzzy patch, but still, yeah. an interstellar visitor visible without equipment. It dimmed again as it got closer to the sun, but that was quite a moment. That must have been amazing for stargazers. So, these detailed observations, the spectroscopy, what did they reveal about what 3 Aetalus is actually made of, its structure? Well, it's fascinating because these observations are like um, a window into the building blocks of planets in another star system entirely. Right. The analysis showed it's it's a mix of volatile ices, stuff that turns to gas easily, and more stubborn refractory materials. We saw strong signals from hydroxyl. Oh, Which it, means water. Exactly. It's the chemical fingerprint of water ice sublimating, turning straight into gas as the comet warmed up. Okay. And the CO2 and methane that uh, JWST found. Yeah. That's really exciting because it points towards a primordial composition. Meaning it hasn't changed much since it formed. Pretty much. Like it's been deep frozen since its birth preserving a sample of the conditions in its parent system. As for the nucleus, the solid bit, it's probably irregular in shape. And by watching how the coma's brightness flickered slightly, we think it rotates about every 7.2 hours. So cool we can figure that out. And all that material coming off it formed the tail, right? Yeah. How did that develop? What did that tell us? Yeah, as it got closer to the sun, the heat really kicked things into gear. Those ices sublimated faster and faster. Just boiling off into space? Sort of, yeah directly from solid to gas. This released huge amounts of dust and gas, forming that big coma and then the tail. And the tail grew enormously. By early September, it was over 500,000 kilometers long. Half a million kilometers. And always pointing away from the sun, pushed back by solar wind and radiation pressure. We also saw these cool features called jets. Jets, like little eruptions. Exactly. Bright streaks in the coma, seen in high-res images. They happen where sublimation is particularly intense on certain spots on the nucleus. Wow. Studying those jets gives us clues about the comet's internal plumbing, you know, how the ices are distributed inside, like seeing geysers on an alien rock. What a dynamic object. Now, beyond the science, a visitor like this, it must have made waves down here on Earth, right? How did the public and maybe culture more broadly react? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the media coverage was huge. CBS News, NASA, The New York Times, they were all giving regular updates. Yeah. Felt a bit like a cosmic news event unfolding. Yeah. And the fact that it was interstellar and potentially visible, that really fired up public interest. Amateur astronomers, even just casual sky watchers, everyone's trying to track it. Social media just lit up with photos and discussions. A shared global moment, kind of. It really was. Connecting people just looking up at the same amazing thing, this visitor from so far away. And did it stick around in the conversation? Did it lead to, say, more educational stuff or deeper thinking? What are the bigger implications for us. Yeah, definitely. Science educators jumped on it. NASA's JPL put up an interactive website. You could track it in real time, find resources. Oh, cool. Schools used it in lessons, virtual field trips, astronomer Q&As. It was a great teaching moment. Yeah. It, culturally, you saw artists, writers drawing parallels to famous comets like Halley's. It sparked those bigger conversations, didn't it? About interstellar travel, life elsewhere. Makes you think about our own place in the cosmos. It really does put things in perspective. Okay, back to the science then. How does ATLS, as the third interstellar visitor, really change or add to our scientific understanding? It's not just another data point, is it? No, it's much more. Understanding this visitor from, you know, 20 light years out, it actually helps us understand our origins too. 
How so? Well, for comparing interstellar objects, ATLS is key. Think about it. Umuo was quiet. Borisov was pretty normal comet-wise. ATLS, being active but maybe differently, sits somewhere in between or perhaps shows a new variation. It helps us build better models for how these things form and act. Right, fills in the picture. And for planetary science, its composition, those primordial ices, the organics, suggests it forms somewhere cold and dense in its home system. That's huge. It helps us refine our models of how planetesimals form, how water and organics get delivered to planets like early Earth, by showing us what it might have been like over there. So it's like seeing a possible history for our own solar system mirrored elsewhere. In a way, yes. Yeah. And all this data feeds into planning future missions, like dedicated interstellar object interceptors and spurs on the search for more visitors with surveys like ATLS itself and the upcoming LSST. That's a massive contribution from one comet. But surely there were challenges, right? Things we still don't know. Oh, for sure. There are still puzzles. Just observing it was tough. It moved fast across the sky and got close to the sun, making it hard to track continuously. Like trying to photograph a speeding bullet, you said. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the coma, being so bright, often hides the details of the nucleus itself. It's like trying to see a tiny rock inside a huge, bright cloud. So there are still uncertainties about its exact composition, why it outgasses the way it does. If we found some really weird molecule in there, we'd need whole new ways to explain it. And yeah, pinpointing its exact home star 20 light years away, that might just remain one of its beautiful mysteries. Wow. So much learned, yet so much still to ponder, even as it leaves us. Comet 3 Aeolus, it's really left its mark. This deep dive really underscores how just one visitor can push our understanding so much further out into the universe. Absolutely. And as 3 Aeolus heads back out into deep space, leaving our solar system forever, it leaves us with some pretty big questions, doesn't it? Definitely. If its makeup really does show us the conditions in another young star system, mm. well, what does that imply about how common those building blocks for life might be out there? Right. Are environments like ours common? Exactly. And maybe the biggest question, what other cosmic messengers are already out there, silently making their way towards us right now, carrying who knows what secrets from distant stars? Incredible things to think about. The universe keeps sending us these amazing glimpses. Well, we hope you keep looking up and exploring those cosmic mysteries with us. Thanks for joining this deep dive on Comet 3IAT Leas.